Okay, so I just want to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about uh, something called as uh, uh, dynamic light scattering technique. Uh, again, uh, in this, you have a way of extracting the particle diffusivity. Okay, and from that, you can get the uh, size of the particle. Okay. Um, yeah, any thoughts? Uh, what, what do you know anything about Brownian motion? Uh, sorry, bro uh, anything about uh, dynamic light scattering? What what is what is it? Any basics of scattering? No. Okay. Let's. Okay. All of you may, may know this, right? What is this? Yeah, this is a laser show, right? I mean, you know, uh, very popular, right? Uh, um, and why do you get why do you get this uh, fascinating beam of light why do you think you get these things reflection of light i mean the all the lights travel at different colors travel at different speeds uh, this is not nothing to do with the color of light you know i don't know if you have gone to any laser show uh, you will see that uh, they make something right i mean you know if you if you have clean air you won't get this. Yeah, right. They they create some synthetic particles, right? Some fog or smoke-like thing or something like that, right? Only then you see this, right? Yes, right. So, uh, so in that case, uh, uh, you can think about you know this uh, liquid in air dispersions, okay? Or particle in air dispersions, right? We talked about this, right? There are different classification of dispersions. One of the dispersions are, you know, if you have a dispersed species, could be liquid or a solid particle, and that's in air, right? So in such in something like a laser show, your continuous medium is the ambient air, and they have created some particles, okay, which essentially scatter light, okay. Now, okay, so the origin of uh, scattering, right? So, any kind of scattering, okay, is due to what is called as a, a localized non uniformities in the sample, okay? It becomes clear from the previous example, right? If I had only air, clean air, then you will not see these colors, right? So, you, you need to have a localized non uniformities okay in this case what i what do i mean by that is you should have maybe air with some particles okay or liquid some particles right that's okay the particles in that case constitute non uniformities in the sample okay um, now people use different light sources in experiments okay you can use a, a visible light Okay, or white light, right? Or you can use uh, X rays. Okay, you can use lasers. You can use neutrons. Okay, and depending upon the uh, the light source that you use, okay, uh, uh, the scattering is kind of kind of attributed to different reasons. Okay, uh, if you use visible light, okay, then the scattering originates from the refractive index variations. Okay, I have a particle that has some refractive index n one, a fluid medium that has some refractive index n two. Okay, only when you have the refractive index difference is when you'll have scattering. Okay, so now. What I mean by that is, if I if I want to do a, a dynamic light scattering measurements, okay. If you have a fluid which has a refractive index n one, if I have dispersed species whose refractive index is very close to that of the medium itself, then you can't do scattering experiments, okay. The same thing is true for microscopy as well. When you are doing microscopy experiments, 
if I have a solution okay, and uh, you can do these experiments. Okay, People do what is called as refractive index matching. Right? That means th there are some classic videos in YouTube, you can look it up. Okay, I have a, a container, I have glass, uh, you know, this say a beaker, right? And there's a glass light. Okay? Now, there's, when there's nothing in the, in, the, in, in the container, because there's enough refractive index difference between uh, the glass and the ambient air, which is, right, you can see the glass rod, right? Now, what you do is you put water, you can still see, see the glass uh, in a rod because there, there's a, again a refractive index difference between your water and the rod, right. Now, if I replace this with, you know, fluid, you know, maybe up to this level and you, you know, and if that fluid has same refractive index, the only thing that you will see is what is above, okay, that immersion immersed portion you won't be able to see okay so therefore depending upon okay in, in in scattering okay the the scattering originates from either the refractive index difference or if you use x rays uh, what is important is the 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 spatial fluctuations in the electron density within the material okay that's what gives rise to scattering when you do when you use x rays okay similarly um, uh, in when you use neutrons, people talk about what is called as a, a scattering length density difference. Okay, so you can read up a little bit about this. You know, when you when you when you when you go back, uh, the idea is there has to be some heterogeneities or non-uniformities, some some difference in particular properties, and that's when you can carry out uh, you know, scattering experiments. Um, so these are typical wavelengths, right? Uh, if you use laser light, uh, typical wavelength of the laser light is about, you know, it will be in depending upon whether you use blue laser, red laser, okay, your wavelength would vary, but typically you can say it's about 500 nanometer. If you use X-ray scattering, okay, this wavelength is smaller, okay. If you use again neutron scattering, again the wavelengths are much smaller. So, depending upon the, the wavelength that of the uh, light that people use, that will give you the length scale that you can obtain from scattering measurements. Okay? Uh, and that length scale uh, is kind of expressed as some parameter, uh, again not important at this point, um, which is expressed as nanometer inverse and uh, 2 pi by this parameter okay s will give you the the length scale that you can obtain from the scattering experiments okay let's think about it okay so 2 pi uh, divided by is 10 power minus 3 to uh, 4 into 10 power minus 2 right therefore the length scale that i can get from scattering experiment when i use a laser light it is 2 pi into 10 power 3 to 2 pi into uh, or uh, 0 0.5 pi into 10 power 2, right? Okay, that's in nanometer. Okay, now let's do the same thing for uh, uh, this one. Okay, so these numbers are smaller, right? If I if I look at 2 pi divided by these numbers, these numbers are smaller, right? Compared to these numbers. Okay, that means if I want to measure size of smaller things. Okay, if I want to measure the size of smaller things, okay, I should use the light source whose wavelength is smaller. Okay, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, um, now, okay, this is a. Um, there are different types of scattering experiment that people do. Um, uh, we won't introduce these terms, but I'll, maybe what I'll do is I'll come back here. Okay, uh, people do different kind of scattering experiments. One is what is called as a, a static light scattering experiment. Other one is what is called as a, a dynamic light scattering. Okay, uh, in static light scattering, what is measured is the time average 
okay, time average intensity of the scattered light okay, is what is measured. Okay. Uh, a typical experiment looks something like this. You know, I have a, a light source okay, and I have a, a sample and this light beam is incident on the sample okay and the local heterogeneities right, or the non uniformities in the sample will make the light deviate or scatter light and that is actually collected on a screen okay and and this screen is typically a, a camera okay uh, what you record is something called as a a pattern like this. Okay, this is what is called as a scattering pattern. Okay, and what you see here is related to what is the the microstructure of the sample, or in the words, what is the spatial arrangement of particles in the fluid. Okay? What you are seeing here is a case where particles are formed chain. Right? Now, if you have a, a case where the particles are formed chains, you will get a scattering pattern which, which is kind of elongated in a particular direction or uh, this is an optical microscopy image okay, where the particles are nicely arranged right everything is a, a hexagonal pattern right right it's a it's a hexagonal pattern now this is a, a microscopy image okay by an optical microscope uh, we have taken that converted that into a fft pattern and what you again see is a hexagonal pattern right can you see here okay in a way, one way to think about this scattering, light scattering experiment would be I am imaging microstructure, but not in the real space in what is called as a Fourier space. Okay, that's all that's all that is there. Okay. So therefore, in a typical static light scattering experiment, what you do is you measure time average intensity of the, the scattered light, okay, and it is measured by by fixing you know your screen or a, or a camera at a particular location okay and depending upon the location of that okay whether I, it's very close to the beam uh, very close to the sample or very far away from the sample okay this theta will vary right depending upon the theta uh, the, you know the variation of the theta uh, you can essentially uh, 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 obtain information about different length scale okay, present in your system. Okay, let me put it at that you know in that way at this point. Okay. Now, yeah, so that is uh, something about uh, 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 static light scattering. Okay. In the, uh, the dynamic light scattering, what you do is what you measure is a a fluctuations in the light in intensity as a function of time is measured. In one case, you measure the a time average intensity that is in static light scattering. In the dynamic light scattering, what you measure is a, a fluctuation in the light intensity itself as a function of time. Okay? That is the difference between the static light scattering and the a dynamic light scattering. Okay, the instrument for dynamic light scattering it looks something like this. This is a one of the tabletop devices that is available, and you can actually use this for a measurement of uh, size of the particle. Okay, or polymers, or some surfactant structures. I talked about this uh, uh, liposomes, right? Or vesicles. You can measure size of that. Uh, you can also use such an instrument for measuring charge in the particle. Uh, molecular weight of polymers, there is a lot of, okay. Uh, 
in the within the instrument uh, you know what essentially there is a laser source there are a set of lenses and these lenses as I said uh, are useful in you know sending a, a collimated light right okay um, uh, and uh, it falls under the sample okay and uh, and there is a detector okay. Uh, typically these detectors what they do is they, they are what are called as they are called as photon detectors okay. They essentially measure the number of photons okay uh, scattered okay and, um, and that is your sample that has uh, some particles okay. Um, Again, I had mentioned about the scattering volume at some point. Uh, the intersection between the incident beam, that's your this is your inc inter incident beam, right, and the the scattered beam. Okay, that gives you uh, some finite volume, right, and uh, and that contains the particle that you have in the in the fluid. Therefore, the scattering volume contains. Okay a much larger I, I mentioned this point right if you look at the scattering volume so if even if it is like say you know uh, of the order of say millimeter cube volume okay that millimeter cube volume will have really large number of particles okay even if you take 0 0.001 weight percentage sample it turns out that number of particles in 1 ml would be as high as 10 power 12 to 10 power 14 particles okay therefore the scattering volume really contains a, a large number of particles than what can be analyzed by something like microscopy you know where you look at only a small section of your sample okay for example something like this right if i'm going to analyze particle size from this okay of course they look mono dispersed but then you know i'll be limited to maybe few hundreds of particles right however if you do scattering experiments the scattering volume uh, will contain essentially large number of particles okay therefore you get a, a better average you know for the particle size when you do um, uh, dls experiments um, maybe i'll stop here uh, we'll uh, uh, continue with uh, uh, you know uh, uh, talking about how do we how does one use uh, dls for measuring particle size uh, plus we'll also talk a little bit about uh, um, using uh, brownian motion for looking at what is called as a a sol gel transition okay that's what we'll try and do in the next class yeah. thanks